What's going on? It's your boy Sermon at Sermon's Domain on Twitter with his 13th album now out. Jay Z returns to rare form. If you were doubting Jay Z, and it's perfectly understandable considering the mixed reactions to Magna Carta Holy Grail, his latest album, 444, will show you that Jay can rap his ass off still. But even more so than the fact that the raps are top notch, this album is something new for Jay-Z. It's a territory he's never explored. So far, I've seen a lot of critical acclaim. And the reason for that this early is the transparency that Jay is on with this album is at a level that he's never done before. Jay isn't afraid to say that he cheated or talk about his mother being a lesbian for the first time or even call former friends out on their BS. Yes, he does throw some shots at Kanye West. In summary, Jay isn't afraid to be human. On 444, it's almost like pretty much like the Jay-Z persona is killed off. And this is more a Sean Carter album. I've been seeing that phrase a lot in reviews and on Twitter, and it makes perfect sense. The title track, which is one of my favorites, is probably a nice segue into my favorite songs, is Kill Jay-Z. And this record is all about uh, killing off the ego, allowing yourself to be honest with your listeners. When I clicked play on 444, I really wasn't expecting what happened. Like, Jay gets right into it. He wastes no time. In under three minutes, Jay says so much on Kill Jay-Z. He talks about Kanye West and, like, the riff in their relationship and how he feels Kanye's ego has gone off the deep end. He pretty much says what we all are thinking. And it also, and in, in many ways, it also hurts because... They were like real close friends to see them drift so far apart. It's like just insane. On the record, he also says that he egged Solange on. And that is like a crazy thing to admit because you know the elevator incident is like huge. Everybody was talking about that and people still talk about it. And so for him to like admit that is kind of crazy. I think the thing that surprised me most about Kill Jay-Z was that he talked about shooting his brother when he was young, and also uh, stabbing Lance Unriviera, who apparently was bootlegging this stuff, and, you know, they got into an altercation. This was the moment that almost derailed Jay-Z's career. So the intro was special. These are not topics that you hear him rap about often. And once I heard this first track, I was like, yeah, this album is going to be special. Emotion is a huge part of why this album is going to be so uh, well regarded. And 444, the title track, is another one of my favorites. Last year, after Beyonce dropped Lemonade, you had these rumors that suggested Jay was going to record his response in like an entire album in like the, a similar fashion. And so we don't get that with 444. Instead, we get the title track, which says all that needs to be said. Yeah, he talks about this throughout the album, you know, here and there, but you can hardly say that this album is fully about him cheating on Beyonce. And when you think about it, all Jay-Z needed was like one record, just one track to really address like, you know, the, the cheating, the rocky road that he's had with Beyonce. And I like that this exceeded all of my expectations. When I thought Jay would address this, I thought he would do like some kind of clever line, but no, he really opens up on this record. It's some emotion that's never really been tapped into. Early on in the song, he says, I don't deserve you. And you can really feel him, uh, you know, tap into like his sadness, his sorrow. Like he is in uh, a state where he understands that his world is about to come crashing down. That's the vibe that I get when I listen to this song. If I could describe this song in one word, it would be vulnerable. You can hear that Jay, who notoriously doesn't write down his lyrics, is having a hard time 
you know, getting into the headspace to spill out all these lyrics, all these words that he's saying. This is not a confident record. This is deep self-reflection. My last favorite takes on a, a different approach from my first two. The first two were on there because of the honesty, um, not really for like the bars, but more so for the concept. And so Family Feud is one of my favorites because of the bars. Yeah, it's got a nice concept to it as well, but I think I found myself really enjoying the lines. Like, there's so many quotables. Obviously, the biggest one being uh, Al Sharpton in the mirror taking selfies. How is him or Pill Cosby supposed to help me? Like, that is how you do a, a regular, like, reference. Like, a... Uh, a reference that is like fresh. Fabulous would definitely drop a bar about Al Sharpton taking selfies, but it'd be in like a corny way. Here, Jay uses that as a way to really like uh, hit something meaningful. Like, how is Al Sharpton supposed to help when he's over here taking selfies? You know, trying to be like an Instagram honey. It's it's kind of crazy when you look at like the photos. I was just uh, amazed. Like, why is he doing all this? So I get Jay's perspective when he says that line. Also, I like that Jay is like the voice of reason for this old rapper versus new rapper debate. We've been seeing it brewing uh, a long time. And with that said, also, I thought to myself, like, do you think that Jay-Z is on the internet a lot more than you would expect? Because it feels like listening to this album, you can tell that he's... Uh, using the internet more often than not and I think it's kind of it's kind of weird because we often think of like rappers like big time rappers are not sitting around browsing all the time they're doing you know all kind of business and stuff so it feels kind of weird to hear Jay-Z like reference to Al Sharpton mirror selfies and to hear him talk about like the old rapper versus new rapper debate like I can't imagine Jay logging on to YouTube and watching uh, a little Yachty interview where he disses some old rappers um but there's also like a line and I can't remember if it's on this song or on another song where he talks about how uh you know he talks about his legs and so his legs are kind of like a meme um simply because he doesn't have like the most like toned up legs so he says that uh i skip leg day and i still run the world like a little brag about that and so that's why i thought to myself like jay definitely uses the internet a lot more than you would expect now for my critical moments so there are no bad songs on 444 in my opinion instead my two things revolve around first being that there is no album cover. Like there is a little album cover, but it's nothing special. I feel like with so much attention going into the music and the words that Jay sort of skipped out on having a meaningful cover. And it's a pet peeve of mine. I don't like that in this generation that we are experiencing a time where album art doesn't matter as much. You see artists take shortcuts through that more often than not. And so personally, I just hate how little it means in this generation. My other thing was the fact that there was some songs previewed in the commercials that aren't on the album, particularly Adnis, which is the letter to his father. Now, when I originally said this and jotted this down, we didn't have an answer for when we would hear these records, but now we do. Young Guru went on Twitter and said that he was going to uh, make sure that Adnis and about two other records make it onto the physical copies of 444. Now, there's no release date for physical copies, but they are coming in the future. I did feel like it was a bit weird because, yes, it does give you an incentive to buy a physical copy, but it's also a non-title thing, so it's kind of like, why would Jay do that? Jay's been, like, very in with title and doing everything he can to make sure that that continues to grow, and so for him to give away some songs on a physical copy instead of somehow integrating it into title is kind of, uh, you know, just weird. 
444 is like one long therapy session over a bunch of No ID production. And I didn't really talk about No ID in this review, but hands down, his beats are incredible. I knew this before the Jay-Z album, but now I feel like No ID is in such a, a creative space. And there's an in-depth interview with Rolling Stone. I'll link it in the description section so you could check that out. But it really breaks down like how he was struggling before he started working on this album with Jay-Z. Like he felt stagnant in what he did to get himself out of that. Pulling, you know, 500 ideas is what he said. Like he was just going and going and creating as much as possible. And so I really resonated with like that idea of, you know, feeling stagnant. And then hearing him break down all the different music, like all the, the production and the timeline of things, it's always cool to hear from that perspective because who knows if Jay-Z himself is going to do an interview. So I'm glad that No ID was able to speak about it. But going back to the therapy aspect, most of these songs don't even have hooks to them. Like it's really just Jay spitting and then going to the next song. It's kind of like a really, uh, it's a unique approach. Like I said, it feels more like therapy than an actual album in that sense. So more than being one of the year's best releases, and even more than being one of, uh, in my opinion, Jay-Z's top three albums, um, I mean, I can revisit, I'll revisit that idea, but as of right now, I feel like it's a top three Jay-Z album. But more than both of those things combined, I hope this album inspires. There is so much that went into this album, so many words that Jay is talking about, so much stuff. He's talking about supporting black businesses. He's talking about uh, having a therapist and how you should, well, he's not necessarily saying you should go to therapy, but in many ways, it's something that if you need it, you should go to it. And Jay-Z is an example. The man is a billionaire and he's still you know going to therapy talking to a therapist and you should be honest and open with yourself and the people that you interact with like those are just a few examples that I picked up while listening to the album but there is so much that you can gain from listening to this album we are lucky and privileged to have Jay-Z as an artist and still making incredible music you know well over 20 years into his career this, like I said at the beginning, is new territory. This is something that Jay hasn't done. So we should all be thankful that we have Jay-Z's powerful voice to speak for not only hip-hop, but to the world. 444 is an album that everybody tuned into, whether you like hip-hop or not. And I hope that everybody, including you watching, got something out of it left feeling inspired. I hope it meant something for you. So those are my thoughts on Jay-Z's 13th album, 444. After you listen to it, talk to me in the comment section below. Are you feeling this album? Are you not feeling this album? And I would definitely like to hear somebody who said they're not feeling this album, but talk to me in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts on the album and then like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, share the video. Follow me on Twitter at Sermons Domain, and as always, thank you for your time. I appreciate you for watching, and until next time, peace.